We have in the studio with us a person of whom I can only say that he is a man of the Renaissance. In these days of specialization, it's not often one comes across such versatility. His creative activities uh, span uh, the worlds of literature, music, drama, cinema, painting, and uh, politics. Um, I give you. Harindranath Chattopadhyay. Harinda. <laughs> greetings. First of all, I'd like to offer my greetings to the audience. We can't see you, but you can see us, of course. But you believe we can't see you? We can. We have got the inner eye. <laughs> and uh, thanks a lot for saying all that you said. Well, it's the truth, Harinda, and I wanted to ask you, I mean, with this, uh, this uh, versatility, um, uh, uh, I mean, well, to put it very simply, how did you acquire this? Was it due to your family background or the, the atmosphere in which you were born? You were born in, in the, uh, at the tail end of the last century, weren't you? Yes, uh, you forget we have ancestors, you know, <laughs> and ancestors influence every birth. Well, as ancestors have certainly influenced my birth, my growth, my imagination, my expression, and certainly helped me to create whatever I have done in a very humble way. But of course, they are the exterior influences too. I was born in Hyderabad at a time when Hyderabad was like a city in the Arabian Nights. Camels, elephants, men with daggers, and all kinds of riches of the past. It was very, very rich, my childhood. My people were very wonderful in their own way. My father was the first DSC of India. DSC, my DSC, Doctor of Science. I see. And uh, he certainly was a great educationist. He founded the Nizam College. I see, I didn't know that. Yeah. And your father or your mother? My um, mother. Were they interested in literature and poetry? My God, and music? my mother was a singer. I my see. father was a writer of a peculiar mystical poetry. But that wasn't his forte. He was a scientist and a wonderful person with regard to literature. I know Sarojini once said to Father, Father, you know, Poetry is the highest science. And father replied, Baby, science is the highest poetry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of atmosphere I was uh, brought up in. Then my sisters and brothers, very beautiful, playful people who really loved to have moonlight uh, picnics and things like that. We had a very gorgeous childhood. And my growth into uh, a young man was not so gorgeous, it was full of torture, the torture of a struggle between a something inwards and a great deal outwards. Well, when Out you talk about uh, being a young man, it seems to me, Harinda, you're still pretty young. I mean, almost, <laughs> almost everybody I've spoken to or yeah. met, yeah. Uh, and, you know, we do talk about you, oh, sweet. friends, <laughs> and also uh, your son Ram and uh, other friends people with whom we used to do broadcasting yeah. in the early days when there was no television. And they say that yeah. one of the most remarkable qualities you have is your ability to, to communicate and identify with the young. Yes, well, that is oh, true. Tell me, how do you do it? There's no question of my identifying myself with the young. I am a little boy. I am as old as a child with whom I play, or one who I, whom I talk to, whom I love, then I am as young as young men. 
who want to meet me and who can't believe I am of the age that I am. Eighty? Eighty-eight. Well, you certainly don't look it. That's no, sure. I don't. Calendars are very angry <laughs> with me, really. <laughs> Calendars really are angry. Winter is very, very angry that I won't allow the springtime in my blood to deteriorate. Now, can you tell us, um, in, in a country in which, uh, I mean, English became the predominant language of the elite and so on, yeah. and where we are, even now, I'm, I, I'm amazed to find, that we still got this barber, black sheep or culture, or so, you know, that, sort of, that sort of syndrome. What I wanted to ask you was, uh, I mean, you were a pioneer, as far as I can gather, in the writing well, of original nursery rhymes in Hindi. Well, I wouldn't say a pioneer, but I certainly felt like writing for children. And uh, I have written a lot of things. As a matter of fact, it isn't I who have written. But there's a little boy inside me called Mana. Mana. Who yes. is, he thinks out things. He feels things like a child does. And you feel you are the vehicle. I just write down what he says. Yes, you've mentioned this to Other me people write down what he that says. That your poetry seems to write itself. It is true. Extraordinary. It is. All, uh, well, all big poetry writes itself. Verses don't. We write verses. Yes. But this uh, uh, Mana has written some beautiful things. I'd like to read. Uh, yes, something. I was going to ask you, please, you know, you know um, yeah. um, a nursery rhyme or your poems for children. Yes, that's um, marvellous. There, there's a little book. Is the real Gadi? Yeah, that is very popular. And the Tota? Tota, yes, yes, yes. And yes. the kite fight? Oh, you know all about it. Well, I don't, but I mean... Anyway, you know. and the point is this, that uh, the book is called Tati Tati Tota. Uh, it's, some of the poems are very, very popular among children. Tati Tati Tota Pinjire Me Sota पंख जो हरे थे उड़ान से भरे थे पड़ गए हैं ढीले हो गए हैं पीले ताती ताती तोता पिंजरे में सोता ताती ताती तोता पिंजरे में रोता झांकते हैं प्यारे नन्हे नन्हे तारे कहते हैं तोता काहे को तू रोता अंधकार छोड़ दे पिंजरे को तोड़ दे उड़ते उड़ते सारी रात आके मिल जा अपने साथ छोटा भाई तोता प्यारा तू भी बन जा एक सितारा ब्यूटीफुल है इट्स लवली एंड आई वुड लाइक यू टू हियर भाई भाई की लड़ाई टू काइट्स आर फाइटिंग यस Paper kites. I read the thing out. I don't remember it. No, no, please. The poem. It's a very interesting little poem. And these two kites are fighting, uh, and see what their fates are. <laughs> the fate of these fighters, these two brothers. We've known about brothers fighting in politics and various other fields of life. Uh, but this is what happens. Teri meri aaj ladai. तेरी मेरी आज लड़ाई आसमान तक हम दो भाई अपने अपने धागे पर आज चढ़ेंगे और लड़ेंगे हार जीत तो है निर्भर अपने अपने भागों पर एक पतंग का था रंग पूरा भूरा दूसरे का जरा हरा और ज्यादा साधा साक्षी था एक बादल जो के रंगा हुआ था साक्षी था एक बादल जो के रंगा हुआ था आसमान से टंगा हुआ था बोला बादल कुर्ते कुर्ते बादल बोल बाद बोला बादल बारी आई कुर्ते कुर्ते उड़ते उड़ते उन दोनों में छिड़ी लड़ाई धड़क धड़क कर फड़क फड़क कर मुड़क मुड़क कर लुड़क लुड़क कर नभ में डुबकी मार मार कर शेखी आपस में बघार कर हार जीत कर जीत हार कर आसमान तक बढ़ते बढ़ते 
पढ़ते पढ़ते चढ़ते चढ़ते लड़ते लड़ते कदम कदम दोनों भाई हुए खत्म एक कट गया दूसरा फट गया बादल खट गया और फट गया It's very interesting. I like this poem very much because uh, I wanted to ask you, Hinda, uh, how is it that uh, uh, whereas you write in Hindustani and in English, yeah. you don't write in Bengali? No, because uh, for the simple reason that I wasn't in Bengal at all, actually, uh, but I did write uh, a song, rather two songs, during the Bangladesh fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, in bengali because i remember that uh, the uh, abindranath tagore uh, wrote to a friend of his uh, greatly admiring your work but he d- he doesn't mention whether you wrote in bengali no he translated uh, one of my poems called the flute mm-hmm. and uh, he wanted to translate uh, the my poems but at first he felt rather awkward and he said it must be translated so he wrote to a friend dilip rai who is no more and he said we can't uh, bengali language can't contain him and uh, in any case very ridiculous to say so but he said so and then he said in a second letter he said well i wanted to translate the uh, t- translate his poems but i didn't feel that i could uh, do it but i f- tried to do it i tried to translate a poem it's called the flute the idea is that the the, the mother is playing the flute the the silence in the flute goes on mm-hmm. uh, but uh, the breath uh, of the player brings music into existence now um, he said that and uh, he said uh, it's a beautiful poem but i tried to do it but where is harin's voice tabe harinair kantho ko tha it's very interesting mm-hmm. now he knew i couldn't didn't write in bengali at that time i i didn't write anything i hadn't written anything but during the bangladesh moment i wrote really two inspired songs I, uh, there was another thing which i'm sure the uh, our viewers will be very interested to know that is you know we have referred to your parents and your family background yeah. the, and the mahol in which you were brought up in hyderabad yeah, yeah. i i would also uh, ask you uh you have spent you spent some time at sri aurobindo and you spent quite a lot of, a number of years in, in in two or three ashrams i mean has that influenced you oh, anyway? well, your well, gurus you, the people whom you call your yes, gurus yes the i i call really ramana maharshi of tiruvannamalai my actual guru he is with me all day and all night without exaggeration mind you i was also at sri aurobindo i was there for 3 years and during that time i wrote 27 volumes of verse of poetry and every poem has been discussed by sri aurobindo and his impression about the poem has been uh, put down in a letter in letters that used to come every day every morning a letter used to come but have these letters been published no no i've got many of them with me we we short letter they ought to be very interesting to people you know but that is the story and i was with sri aurobindo sri ramana maharshi and uh, ramdas of kanangar i had wonderful experiences with him i am hoping to write a book on the yogis i have met only yesterday i returned i returned from pune we went specially to see uh, maharaj there uh, maharaj joshi mm-hmm. an extraordinary man he certainly is a human being of the first order and uh, he knows you by heart he can even predict the future really? he knows your past and we have proof of it i'm very proud to have known these people they have influenced me very very much indeed very much uh and what about the jains you have written the jain parables was there any particular jain uh, yeah. muni or sadhu or well indeed I, uh, i met a man quite accidentally and what an accident it was an incident really uh yeah, i call him kanti bhai great scholar of jainism he himself lectures occasionally rather every monday he lectures to people on jainism and accidentally meeting him i uh, went to his place i said i want to hear some of your jain parables your jain stories and he would uh, he would recite to me or repeat or read out 
uh, Jain stories, very short stories, some of them. I used to take the notes down, just notes. I used to go home after that and produce a poem, a longer poem than the story told was. And uh, very often not only poem, but uh, drama. I have uh, written a whole big fat volume of Jain parables. I hope someday uh, they will be published, I think shortly. Well, I, I, I hope they're published soon. Yeah, well, soon or late is only a, just a meaningless feeling of the mind and a sense of time. I'm not bothered about soon or late. I only want these poems to be known to people, known by people, to be read by them, because, frankly speaking, when I write such poems, believe me, they write themselves. I feel that they're happening. Poems happen. One doesn't write such poems. It is not possible. Yes. Now, uh, you mentioned drama uh, um, just a couple of moments ago. Um, I believe it was in 1929. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was, I presume, be the silent days of the cinema. Yes, yes. Oh, when, yes. When, and you were very active in the theatre. Yes, and you, you, you wrote the music for, you wrote the play, and you yeah, produced yes, it. Yes, 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 and yes, yes. Uh, I believe it ran for a fortnight, 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 fortnight in the Excelsior Cinema, Excelsior. but now the Excelsior Cinema in As Bombay. A, yes. Abul Hassan was the Abul name Hassan, of the Abul Hassan, Abul Hassan. It became very popular. When I produced it in Madras, there were special trains running for people to come and see my play. Fabulous. And it became a great hit. It was unique in those days very colourful. Mm -hmm. I had 60 artists with me, 16 girlies working, and in those days, girls working in a theatre, in, a, in a play, supposed to be very incredibly bad morals, you know, for them. And they were, they were, uh, they were young, Student, were they? all students. I were. believe you have quite a reputation as a ladies' man. Huh? Oh, yes, but I'm very proud. In fact, I was it. talking to Peros Modi the other day, <laughs> and she said that she's now in her 40s, and you probably <laughs> find her too old. <laughs> well, I've got on very well with ladies. Uh, I love ladies. I love women, rather. Ladies are a little distant, aloof. Yeah. from me, because I don't uh, like anything that is exaggerated in a woman. I love a woman to be spontaneous. I love the country women. I love women without any embellishment, meaningless. A woman is in herself the greatest jewel that God ever wore in his crown. And I feel uh, I really fall in love every minute, you know. But I do two things at the same time. I fall in love and I love. These are the two things I do at the one and the same time. And I must say, very in all humility and as a secret perhaps, I think the ladies, or rather the women, return the compliment. Well, I'm going to do a Gallup poll on that one and find out. <laughs> but to come back to theatre, you yes. also wrote a play on Santukaram. Oh, I wrote uh, many of uh, these uh, plays, uh, the plays of the Maharashtra saints, Tukaram, Pundarik, Sakubai, numbers of them. And Tukaram, were, incidentally, was staged in London at the little theatre, okay. Adelphi Terrace. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a, a very successful. Tukaram became very famous here. Famous for one particular reason, that was I didn't use any instruments I, to, uh, to play through the play uh, or to sort of for the song, mm -hmm. to accompany the song. No accompaniment. I sang. I used to be a singer before. Yes, I know. I sang to the Tanpura, and it was so uh, really unique, spontaneous. You know, these instruments really ruin the value of a song, I think, That's very often. It's so silly, especially if the song is beautiful. And Tukaram's song, like, um, uh, for instance, uh, Nako Nako Mana, Guntu Maya Dal, Kala Ada Zabali, 
uh, things like that. I, I believe you, 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 you also wrote songs. I mean, when you were, I, I don't know whether you wrote them in jail or when you were out of jail, but during the, the, the during the freedom movement, you wrote Very, uh, songs, definitely. Uh, which, which a lot of the freedom fighters used to sing. Definitely. So that is, it is not inside the jail. These led me into the jail. <laughs> Very famous they became like Shuru hua hai jang hamara, Shuru hua hai jang, Yuddha karenge, Shuddha marenge, Naranari ek sang, Hamara, Shuru hua hai jang, Chalao lathi, chalao danda, Udhaenge hum apna janda, Rakta hamara nahi hai thanda, Balki agni tarang, Shuru hua hai jang, Aaj gagan mein jai ki lali, Desh pukar badi mat wali, Dash dish gunjata hai jai tali, Garajata Mirti Mirdang, Shuru Hua. It was a sensation in those days. And uh, Inqilab Zindabad, Guje Azadi Ka Naad, Dhanashoshan Ki Kroor Kahani, Hame Hamesh Rahe Ki Yaad, Inqilab Zindabad. It's a very powerful song. Now, now apart from these, uh, what one might call political poems, you've also, over the last 50 or 60 years, written a great deal of poetry, which uh, is a virtually a social... Uh, or a social history of uh, of the changing times, uh, the, uh, the unfolding panorama of of, of of Indian history. Well, I've written a lot and a lot. But apart from that, yes. I mean, we've even been read in the newspapers, you know, yes. um, your quatrains. But I wanted to ask you whether um, um, you could recite for us. I, um, I'd love to recite. For instance, the Kurd seller. Yes, but and before, some lyrics. Before that, I'd love to do the lyrics. Some, some yes, of them well, are pretty. Yes. When you come to think of it, time is a volcanic hole. Standing on the brink of it, man keeps dreaming of the soul. In the valley at the base crawls a lonely caravan. Have you seen the desert's face? See it in the face of man. It's a Beautiful. thing that really depicts what man is today, especially. Very sad. Then I'll recite something else. Shape or Shaped, one of my most popular poems. In days gone by, I used to be a potter who would feel his fingers mold the yielding clay to patterns on his wheel. But now, through wisdom lately, one that pride has died away. I ceased to be the potter and have learned to be the clay. In other days I used to be a poet through whose pen innumerable songs would come to in the hearts of men. But now through new got knowledge which I hadn't had so long, I ceased to be the poet and have learned to be the song. I was a fashioner of swords in days that now are gone which on a hundred battlefields glittered and gleamed and shone. But now that I am brimming with the silence of the Lord, I have ceased to be sword maker and have learned to be the sword. In days gone by I used to be a dreamer who would hurl on every side an insolence of emerald and pearl. But now that I am kneeling at the feet of the Supreme, I've ceased to be the dreamer and have learned to be the dream. It's a very yes. interesting thing. But now I'd like to recite one thing which is not tender, it is rather sharp, facing the situation of the country. It came to me, it literally came through when I was watching on the TV, I was watching the march past of people. Oh, on Republic Day? On Republic Day, yes. That was about six years ago. I'll recite it to you. Yes, please do. The older is marching, the younger is marching. And right through their marching, one hunger is marching. Just watch them a while. The appear synopsis of a harrowing story of national corpses whose eyeballs are torn and in need of a suture before they can hope to look into the future. 
Our future is dented with ditches and shallows. The hope that we held has been hanged on the gallows. And who are the hangmen, pot-bellied afforders, of wealth which has turned them extorters and hoarders, who seated against the blue sky cyclorama, in bloated contentment we keep watching the drama of millions wondering as to where God is. Sad skeletons going in search of their bodies. The older is marching, the younger is marching, and right through their marching, one hunger is marching. Did you send this poem to Indira Gandhi? She well, she's heard it, as a matter of fact, and, and, and a documentary has been made on me very recently by my son, Lakshman. And um, Indira Gandhi was kind enough to give me seven minutes of interview. And there I've recited this. Oh, you have? Oh, yes. She has heard me. It was a very proud day when she came and she gave me the interview. And May I know, ask you to recite the Kurds, Sela? Oh, That's yeah, a poem right. which, uh, which I'm sure that our, oh, our that, viewers would enjoy. Yeah. I mean, I've enjoyed it uh, more oh, than sweet. once. So that has been one of my most popular items on the stage. I used to dance to a, a, an earthen pot, a very big fat ring on my ring finger, and, uh, and my forefinger, and then striking on the pot, I used to dance to drums, of course. Zara chakke dekho, bade maze daar, are bade maze ki. Zara chakke dekho, chakke dekho, chakke dekho. I transcribed it into English and it's been very popular for years now. I know. And it's got an advantage, one great advantage is that I can pick up any theme then and there while working on the stage if I hear that something's happened, a strike and so on. Immediately I compose something and dance and recite it. And so you keep it up to date? Keep it up to date, yes. Like a review? Uh, it's a review. Yeah. It's a review. It's a never thing, never uh, ending, never growing stale review. Never stale. I recite it. Please. Come taste these curds. Come taste these curds. They are white as snow and they are white as birds. Come taste these curds. The world is full of paddy. The world is full of wheat. The world is full of paddy, and the world is full of wheat, yet there are tens of thousands who have no food to eat. Come taste these curds. Oh, come with me, my children, to the sweet and holy town. Come with me, my children, to the sweet and holy town, where every clown becomes a king and every king a clown. Come taste these, come taste these curds, that they are white as snow. A gentleman is one who lives a highly cultured life. A gentleman is one who lives a highly cultured life. He calls on me, but then you see, he comes to meet my wife. Come, taste these curds. <laughs> my wife has got a baby. The baby is divine. My wife has got a baby. The baby is divine. People congratulate me. I hope the child is mine. <laughs> come, taste these curds. <laughs> well, I could go on laughing forever, Harinda, but the point is the camera will not wait for us and this half an hour will be up. So I, what I would very much like to do is to ask you, I was talking to your son Ram on Saturday and he said that there, you have seven volumes of unpublished, 20, no reflection. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven volumes. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jiminy, I mean, really. And, uh, um, I, because I haven't had the opportunity to read the manuscript, but I would like, and I'm sure the audience would be interested uh, to hear a couple of extracts from your I'll reflections. I'd be very proud to do what I can do. Now, the, I told you, 27 volumes of unpublished work. Uh, yes. Uh, only of reflections. And they're of a philosophical nature. Oh, well, yes. I think uh, it's almost one of my very best uh, expressions. I'll read you something from here. The eye calls the ear blind because it cannot see the things that it sees. The ear calls the eye deaf because it cannot hear what it hears. But there are moments when they find that they are both wrong. <laughs> Such moments when the eye intently listens to a landscape as though it were a flowing musical composition and the ear sees the whistling of the wind 
and the trill of a bird as though they were threads of silver and gold intertwined and intertwisted on which the moments are strung like colored beads there's another extract i should like to give you please yes between the yes and the no of things and events which make up the meaning of a magic of existence there lies a whole process of mathematical possibilities and unpremeditated probabilities a series of undivined and unsuspected tangents and cotangents between the to be and the not to be a whole gamut of impossible possibles and now i'd like to tell you something that's in this yes i know i said here a great man has said that without vision the people perish but i say that without people vision perishes what do you say to it thank you harinda <laughs> i'm sorry you viewers we've not had time to cover uh so many other contributions of harinda for instance to the cinema the roles he has played the songs he has composed also we have not talked anything about his paintings or been able to show them to you and i hope that uh, we will soon be in a position and i hope you will soon hold an exhibition of your painting we are hoping to mm-hmm.